Next we talk about aggregate types, which means we construct more complex types from basic types. Typically an aggregate type cannot be compared, so that means you cannot run any comparison operator like equal equal or bigger and equals and so on. There are aggregate, aggregate types that you can assign to each other. There are also those that you cannot assign. We will talk about this, what this means. So there are four aggregate types that we will have a look at. One is the array type, that means you have multiple elements of one type. Then we have a structure, which means we have different types of elements and multiple members of different types. Then we have a union and the enum. Let's have a look what all these of them do. So an array is an object that can store n items of a given data type. So basically when you declare a variable, like here we have temperature as an integer, we can in brackets specify the number of elements that we would like to have. So we can use any number here and the number must be no when the array is defined. So in this case we know, well, there should be three integers values objects stored as part of the temperature variable. How do we access one of these elements? Well, we use the square bracket notation again. So bracket zero means we access the first element inside this array. And you can use um, this kind of expression here like a normal variable. So it can be used as an L value and an R value. We can use also an integer to specify the position, such as we can say temp on position x equals 5 or something like that. You cannot assign arrays as a whole, so you cannot say I have two arrays with three elements and temp array should be the same as temp2. That doesn't work. So arrays are typically not initialized, though it's up to the programmer to make sure that all the elements get well initialized. How do we initialize an array? There are several ways. Uh, one easy way is using a loop. Here we create an array, three elements um, of type integer. So we create our loop that goes from zero up to two. And then we assign, for example, the array at position i to be whatever this number is, plus one. You can also directly initialize an array by assigning using the um, curly brackets in the declaration. So here we have temperature with three elements and we say the three elements are one, two and three. There is also the memsit function, which you can use particularly to initialize um, all, every byte of this um, object with a specific value. Here we want to assign to this temp object, which is an array, the value zero. How, of, how many bytes do we want to use? Well, we use size of temp which then means all these bytes that are used here, we have three times four typically, because integer is size of four, which means 12 bytes will be set to zero. So in with C99, we can define an array size based on a variable. That means you can say, you know, I have date int data, and then I have here an expression in my bracket, or something as simple as data in brackets x, and then I know at runtime this expression will be evaluated and then the array size will be fixed at this particular line of my definition. So we can also, when we initialize an array, we can use an implicit size. As long as on the right hand side we use this curly bracket notation. So here we say data is an array, but we don't say the data consists of five elements. No, the compiler knows how many elements by evaluating this right hand side and counting that there are five elements. So you can use an array with the const modifier and then you cannot change uh, the elements. So here we have data is an array of constant integers, sorry. And then here we try to assign the array on position four, zero, one, two, three. So at, at this position, which is the fourth position, and we get assignment of read only variable. You can use more than one 
um, dimension by just basically continuing this notation with the brackets. So here we have a 2D image, a 640 times 480, and then we can use the brackets on the left hand side again to identify at which kind of element we'd like to write. And we can use it off the right hand side if we would like um, to assign a value. So um, when you use a fixed array, it's very good practice to define a constant for the size of the array. Um, here we use a C preprocessor, preprocessor macro um, size that is filled with the value 10. And when we de declare the variable, well, we say it's of size of this size. And then when we walk through it using a for loop, well, we use size again. There is various ways of accessing invalid members of our array. For an instance, when you created an array of, of size, that means it, in this case 10 elements, you cannot access the 11th element by using size itself. You cannot use the 12th element and you cannot access the you know, minus one elements and so on. In all those cases, the program is wrong. When you are really lucky, then it will crash and you will find that. And there are, of, however, many bad cases in which you try to debug a ghost because the program will not just crash. It will go on and will act a bit uh, weird. So that said, it's in fact your responsibility to enforce array bounds. The compiler will not help you like it would in Java and so on. The, the reason for this is that's a performance reason not to check the bounds, okay? It's up to you, you know what you're doing, so you will make sure that you access your array with a proper size. Okay, so now let's combine this idea a little bit. We can use arrays and casting to understand how bits are stored of a number. Here we want to store in a 32-bit variable in 32 tie var um, the number 11, uh, 1124, which is stored as those uh, numbers, um, individual bits basically. What we do here, we create another array of 8 byte or 8 bit, so 1 byte, um, and we create an array of 4 of those 1 byte uh, kind of objects. Now we do use the function memcopy, so that means we copy into b from the variable var as many bytes as the size of this variable is. And now what we can do, we can look into b, this individual components of b, and print out basically all those four bytes individually. What we will get is 100, 4, and 0, 0. Well, which is when you, depending on the machine you run it, basically 100 plus four times 256, because that's the way that it is stored when you recall the machine representation in two complement. Details about using the ampersand for the memory location notation you will get soon. Just don't worry for now, just take it as it is. So let's now talk a bit about strings. You can think of a string as a compound data type. We define a string basically as a character star. Under the hood it's actually an array of characters, as we said, followed by a termination character, which is zero in, in the ASCII table or backslash zero, depending on how you like to put it. Um, so, and we also know how to specify a single character by using the single quotes and using the double quotes for strings. So what a string means, like hello, we know this is actually is an array of characters terminated with backslash zero. And if I specify it so, H-A-L-L-O, then I have basically five characters. Okay, so the difference is here I have five characters plus a zero termination in a string, and here I have, for instance, just those five characters. Okay, so this is no null terminated strings called, and automatically it's done for you when you use this notation. And it also means we don't know the size of a string until we look for the character backslash zero or an ASCII table, the zero character. Here you see basically an equivalent representation when we say um, fun, 
okay, the string fun, we want to write down. We can do this in, in three different ways. The easiest way is, well, we can say double quotes fun, okay, but that's the same as specify an array of characters with, with f, u and n and then with this zero termination as a last character. Also, we can use this other notation where we explicitly say we want to store four characters. Okay, um, so this uh, curly bracket notation is quite useful because it makes us clear how arrays are really written down. And this is really just syntactic sugar provided by the compiler to make our life easier in the first place. Okay, it can be useful when you want to add, create special ASCII characters that you write it like this, okay, um, explicitly as an array of individual characters instead of using the string notation. 